Ginger. In this video, I'm going to introduce to you my first trip in Korea after my quarantine. Usually I would just edit it and make it a music video like I used to do without me introducing it. But you guys told me that you want to see me appearing more in my video, so here I am. And I'm going to give you some kind of explanation to make it worth it. Or are you just interested in the beautiful cafes I'm going to and the delicious food I'm eating, which I totally understand. I chose this cafe on purpose because the atmosphere kind of reminds me of the place I'm going to introduce to you in this video, or at least it had the same vibes. This cafe is actually a branch. I'm in Daejeon at the moment, but I've seen this cafe in a lot of places in Seoul and even in Busan, right in front of Kwangalli Beach. It's called Rond de Javu, which is a French pun with rendezvous and déjà vu, which makes Rond de Javu, which is cute because these two terms have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> In each of these cafes, you can find some photo spots so you can take some shootings if you wish, if you like that kind of atmosphere. So here you are. In this cafe in Dajon, it's possible to go on the rooftop. Outside, there is actually no terrace, nowhere to sit, but you can have a little bit of a view. Uh, nothing interesting, but yeah. Let's see. But no more introducing. If you know a little bit about Korea, you know already what I'm going to bring you, do you? So let's jump to the video. Due to Corona and different regulations, depending on the country people are coming from, all the students of my program have arrived in Korea for the quarantine at different dates. And it happened that I was one of the first one to come. So I've been released very early and I've had plenty of time ahead to enjoy my stay here before the classes started. So I took this opportunity and during my quarantine, I planned my first trip to Jeju. I decided to stay there for 10 days. Yes, 10 days. But honestly, whoever wants to travel there, 10 days is a lot. Even though there is a lot of things to see, people usually recommend to go there for three days. Three days is like the optimum time you can spend there. By total coincidence, I got to know that the first friend I met in Korea has actually planned separately to also go to Jeju at the same time, the same day, and our flight were literally five minutes apart from the same airport. So me and my friend decided to meet her the next day in Jeju City for lunch. By the way, I'm saying Jeju City because Jeju Island is actually way bigger than one might think. It's as big as three times Seoul and it's separated into two main cities, Sogwipo-si and Jeju-si, as opposed to Jeju-do, which is the island. We stayed nearby the airport on the first night and visited a little bit of Jeju City and ate one of the island food specialties, which is Samgyeopsal, that everybody knows, but with black pork. To be honest, I didn't see much of a difference with usual Samgyeopsal, but I don't know, if you like some gopsal, maybe it's worth trying. The next day, we joined my friend for lunch by taxi, and we had another specialty of the island, which is Jeonbo. They are abalones. The name of the restaurant we went to is The Jeonbo. We decided not to rent a car at the airport due to the high prices of rental and the inconvenience for the car return. But you will have to consider that option if you're visiting the islands because the public transportation is not that convenient. There are not a lot of options. There are some buses. Some of them do actually drive all around the islands next to the coast. But still, buses are kind of on the slow side and they will not bring you to any places you want to go on the island. Plus, they're not very frequent, so you might have to consider renting a car. But my friend did rent one through an app, which I recommend. It seems to be way more convenient and sometimes cheaper. And we have drove together from the restaurant towards the south of the island. And we stopped somewhere on the way to go to a cafe my friend wanted to go to. And it appeared to be the famous Green Cafe, the drawing cafe, that people usually know from its location in Yeonnamdong, next to Hongdae. I've actually been there two years ago in Yeonnamdong and I had no idea that they had the same cafe in Jeju. Did you know? I didn't know. And well, to be honest, this one is even prettier than the one in Yeonnamdong, so I really recommend you to go there if you like that kind of ambience. Mmm, that's fresh. By the way, I'm fully in the theme. I ordered the Jeju Nukcha Latte and the Harabong cake. Harabong is the kind of Jeju clementines or mandarins. It's layered and it actually has some Harabong jelly here and the white layer, I suppose it's Earl Grey because it was the Earl Grey Harabong cake. It looks delicious. Let me try it. Mm. I love this kind of combo. Mm. 
Then my friend kindly dropped us in Sogwiposhi, where we stayed for actually most of our trip. When people travel to Jeju, usually they choose one area they want to visit. So they choose between the north, the south, the east or the west. Because it's kind of inconvenient to travel from one side to the other. It's kind of far away, it takes you a lot of traveling time. There is a lot of things to see in each of these areas. So you can just choose one spot, visit all the area for three days, as I said, and come back later and visit another area. I did the mistake to visit both north and south, but I was there for 10 days, so it's okay. And in the center of the island, you will find the volcanic mountain Hallasan, which is the highest mountain in Korea. Sogipo is located in the south part of the island and there are a lot of nice spots to visit there. And I will show you some of them now. Jeju's tourism is really focused on nature, so you will expect to find a lot of waterfalls, cliffs, gardens, hiking paths, beaches of course, forests, mountains. It's kind of a relaxing heaven. That's why it's the number one tourism destination for Koreans. Even the city center has some kind of chill vibes. I used to be more of a mountain person in the past, but ever since my trip to Jeju, it kind of turns me into beaches more. After a few days, after most of our trip actually, we took the bus, yes the bus, to go to Hyopje Beach, which is located here. I swear the trip was long, but the bus was driving literally on the coast of the island, so we always had something to see through the window, and we could sleep a little bit. I loved Hyopje. It was the best place I visited, I think. The water was crazy blue, and even though I'm a waterphobic, the water was very shallow, so you could see your feet for at least 10 meters away from the beach, more than that. And to be honest, that day we were actually expecting a typhoon. It was the typhoon season, and you could tell it by looking at the sky. But the weather was actually very enjoyable. Finally, we took the bus again and we went back to Jeju for our two last days. There, a local citizen came to pick me up by car and has shown me around a little bit. More on the cultural side this time. That was it for the Jeju trip. I actually had a strong. Mm. I think I needed that experience to know how to prepare for my next trip there, because there will be a next trip. I guess the one thing that I really want to go back for is to hike on Halasan, but I would definitely not go there during summer. It was terribly hot and humid. I went there like end of August, beginning of September. And I heard that the island is actually beautiful by all seasons. So I missed my chance this time in spring, but I will definitely go there this year in fall. Have you been to Jeju Island? Where have you been? If you didn't, where would you go if you would travel there? 
Let me know in the comment and drop some recommendations if you have so I can build my future trip upon it. Again, thanks for following me in this adventure. I have tons of other videos I have to edit to show you around all the cities in Korea that I've visited. So if you want to see some more landscape and spot recommendation and so on, subscribe to my channel, press the notification bell so you can get notified when I upload a new video, and press the thumbs up to support me. And we will see each other in the following video.